Ah, the white box that looks kind of like a mini coffin, but it's not. It showed up in our mailboxes when we were children, and it was one of the most glorious days of childhood. Because, like a lot of things, it's what's inside the box that counts. I mean, lots of things hide better things inside of them, things like pineapples or Easton Press books. But what was inside this white box? It was an action figure. It wasn't just an action figure. It was a mail-away action figure. And the emotional connection of these is really off the roof because it had a sense of ownership, unlike most figures that you would buy at retail or, if you were a kid, get for your birthday or holiday or getting good grades. Because this was a figure you discovered by usually reading about it on the back of the package, and you actually had to engage in an activity, collecting proof of purchase points, be them flag points or Jedi Master points. There were usually lots of clever names, but the end result was you invested your time and energy and maybe threw in a couple bucks, some change, and you got your very own exclusive action figure in the mail. While the Boba Fett figure for Star Wars is one of the most infamous, it wasn't the first. In fact, Star Wars started as a mail-away figure because of the early bird kit that shipped because Kenner couldn't get figures out in time for the movie. But Pretty soon, mail-away figures became a very common thing, not just with Star Wars, but with many lines in the 1980s. Usually advertised on the front of the card back that you could get a free figure if you saved up your proof of purchase points, or as I called them, poocha poochas points when I was a kid. And uh, you usually flipped over to the back of that card and you could see that there was an upcoming figure, possibly even from an upcoming movie, possibly with the wrong name for that movie. And you could be the exclusive owner of that figure at least for an exclusive amount of time. Because more often than not, the figures that were offered in the mail eventually wound up showing up at retail. But you had first rights and first ability to have it, which gave you bragging rights. So before it showed up on your local pegs, you could have it in your collection. And because of the investment you had to take of actually hunting down the proof of purchase points mailing it away, putting a stamp on that box, well, you earned that white box showing up in your mail. It was something to be proud of, and it was something you felt like you deserved because you had put in time and effort. Now, obviously, not every figure showed up in a white box. There were all sorts of different ways figures were mailed, and it clearly was not just Star Wars that did this. Star Wars was just one of the most infamous. But talking about infamous, some of the most infamous figures from the 1980s were mail-away figures like the superpowers Clark Kent that was planned for the following wave, but wound up only being a mail-away figure. As well as many lines that had alternate versions, usually of villains, that shipped as mail-away figures. Some good examples are Cobra Commander with his uh, sort of hood version, as well as Mumra, the unli ever-living the uh, version of him as a mummy. You could, of course, get the more buffed-out version of him, well, several variants, actually, of the buffed-out version of him at retail, but if you wanted the version of him in his more uh, mummy-type look, well, that was exclusive to a mail-away campaign, or at least it was for an initial period of time. Belloc from Raiders of the Lost Ark, another example of this, where the white-suited version with the spiffy white hat was available on the rack, but you couldn't get him otherwise unless you mailed away. Now, mail-away figures didn't stop in the 1980s. They continued. They continued, actually, for about two and a half decades. And Star Wars, once again, was one of those brands that pushed it forward with different versions of the mail-away figure, from ones that you would get for free or at a discounted rate to the ones that you would just pay for outright. And you might have had to hunt down different products, like Frito-Lay, or in this case, the Han Solo Fruit Loops figure, which was actually the very first Star Wars Power of the Force 2 figure ever revealed. He was shown on Fruit Loops well before the first wave even hit retail, so in a lot of ways, he was the initial figure in the line. And boy, did I eat a lot of Fruit Loops for him. Eventually, Hasbro slash Kenner stopped using the white mailing box that looked like a little white coffin and started having their mail-away figures properly carded just like any other figure. So if you wanted to display them in a carded collection, if that's the way you collect, well, you could do that as well. And it was pretty cool. And in fact, this Boba Fett being one of the final ones was an interesting way to uh, round it out. Now, 
it wasn't exclusive to action figures that you would mail away. You, there were all sorts of gimmicks and ways that figures could be available, but the figure was the main form factor for mail away. Things like those freeze frame slides was rare and few between. And as I said, just like in the 80s where other brands besides Star Wars did this, of course other brands continue to do this. And for different reasons. Usually it's to promote the brand, and usually it's with a figure that has a very minimal tooling cost. A lot of times it was to cross-promote different partners. So for example, this Deep Space Nine figure was done as a conjunction with the video game, so that two different licensees could take part in a Cisco action figure promotion. Both Playmates making the figure and Nintendo were making the game. Same thing with this Urukai Burger King figure. Two different promotional partners, one promotional program. And it was a way of having, call it, marketing synergy between two different companies that were both working together with the filmmakers and studios. Of course, there were other reasons to do promotional figures, too. I've done a video specifically about this Moss Man figure who was done on a very purposeful strategy to clear shelves of unsold product. So much product was clogging the pegs that Mattel needed to put out a figure that you would have to buy multiple figures at retail in order to mail away for. It was purely done to clear out those pegs so that more new figures could ship. The same thing happened with the Hasbro Indiana Jones line. The pegs were getting so crowded and overloaded with older figures that Hasbro offered promotions in both their 3 and 3 fourth and 12 inch line to get mail away items, in this case the 3 and 3 fourth skeleton with throne, and for the 12 inch it was an Ark of the Covenant accessory. And it was a way to help clear pegs of unsold product. Other times they were done specifically to promote films or to promote key tentpole events. Some of the coolest exclusives were done through Toy Fair magazine. When the periodical launched in fall of 1997, we soon learned that it was going to become a beacon and a repository for us to get a new mail-away figure every month, at least for several years. And the brands changed every month. They would go from Star Trek to Marvel to, well, almost every brand out there in the toy aisle tended to have a go at the Toy Fair exclusive catalog offering. Although I don't think Star Wars ever wound up on this one, but it did hit Masters of the Universe. That Moss Man figure I mentioned was done through Toy Fair, and that was mostly a partnership because of the logistics. Well, mail-away figures have been a lot more than an emotional payoff. They have actually become part of pop culture themselves. Things like proof of purchase points from the old Kenner figures have been reissued as everything from pins to patches, and have become part of pop culture itself. People pay big bucks for old proof of purchase points that can't even be redeemed anymore, just because we have such an emotional connection and a fond, nostalgic memory of them. And, of course, if you actually have these mail-away figures and you have all the pieces, the baggie, the, the uh, pack and note, the box, the cross-sell that came with it, the more pieces you have on it, the more you're going to get on the secondary market. But hey, if you just have that white coffin mailer box... That alone is going to go for big bucks. It's amazing how much just a white box will sell for on eBay if it once contained an exclusive figure. So the question is, where did these go? Why don't companies have mail-away figures anymore when it was such a big part of our childhood and it really only lasted up until a few years ago? Really, it comes down to costs. When you're making a mail-away figure, even if it doesn't have any tooling, meaning new parts, or it's minimally tooled like a new head like some of those Simpsons figures, well, you still have to partner with a distribution company that's going to mail them out. And that's expensive, because you have to pay for all of the labor of mailing it out. Not to mention the fact that toys are skyrocketing in price. You may have noticed this, there have been press releases from both Mattel and Hasbro lately, and it's not because the executives are now buying more ivory back scratchers, but really the fact that labor costs, not the distribution of mail-away figures, but the production costs, of figures which are done in Vietnam and China is really increasing as both companies emerge from third world to first world economies. So as labor continues to skyrocket, the cost of figures which have to be assembled and painted and boxed by hand is going to continue to go up. It's sort of an inevitable thing. So while mail away figures were great, the cost to making them is basically on par with making a figure that's going to ship at retail. And when it's the same price, 
you're going to need to find ways to make things less expensive, just like how cross cells on the back of action figure card backs have gone away and have been replaced by 4L, meaning four language bios, because this is a way of making the card backs more universal so they can ship to any country. Removing figures from the mail away program and just shipping them to retail is just a way of cutting out the incurred cost of a distribution center. So yeah, we do look fondly back on these from our childhood. It's really nostalgic. It was very empowering to do. And I remember so many weeks running out to my mailbox when the postman or postwoman or post robot got there and begging and wondering if my action figure had arrived. And when it did, that was an amazing moment. And part of my childhood, I know I'll never forget. Lady, where's my spy camera? Where's, where's my, my spy, spy camera? camera? Every Where is day my spy for the camera, last lady? Six months. Where is my spy, my spy camera? camera? Where's my, my spy, spy camera? camera? Where's, where's my, my spy camera? camera? Here's your stupid spy camera! Oh. Thanks, man. I hope this video was insightful to why mail away figures are no longer a big part of toy promotions. If you have any more questions or want me to go into any more detail, let me know in the comments below. And as always, sharing these videos is most appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the comment section.